I'm visiting the Pine Wind Zen Center in Shamong, a peaceful monastery surrounded by 50 acres of Pinelands Preserve. Sajaku Roshi, who grew up in South Jersey and has practiced Buddhism for 40 years, lives at the monastery. Every day, Roshi welcomes guests who come to learn and practice the principles of Buddhism. So most people come to either meditate, learn how to meditate, how to apply the practices of mindfulness and meditation to their life. And we also offer workshops and seminars and programs on a diversity of topics such as relationships, uh, the workplace, bringing the Zen principles and practices into the workplace. Roshi and I are walking along the monastery's peace trail. It has spots along the way called stupas, where anyone can sit and meditate or pray. Some people even come and eat their lunch there. Roshi and I are talking about what it's like to be a monk in South Jersey. That life, does that mean you're always here? Spend I mean, most of your time meditating? and. Uh, Yes and no, yeah. okay? We do have our daily routine. I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to really? get the zendo ready. And uh, our morning early, what we call early dawn meditation. Okay. And uh, people start to arrive around 5.30. Every day, people come here every day. Uh, yes, yeah. And by people, I don't mean like a large number at that time yeah. in the morning. Right. You know, I, I'm, sometimes it's as little as one. Sometimes we get yeah. three or four people. And they come to meditate they with They come you? to meditate with me. We have our routine of meditation. We meditate for uh, anywhere from an hour to two hours in the morning, including our su a chanting of our sutras, mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing at night. And if we're not meditating at night for two hours, it's a combination of meditation and a teaching that either I or one of the other monks will deliver. Do you ever leave here? Yes. You mm -hmm. do? Mm -hmm. So where would you go? Well, last night I gave a talk at a uh, senior facility in uh, Mount Laurel and afterwards mm -hmm. stopped at an Irish pub for dinner. Uh -huh, the there way you home. go. So yes, yes, just like everyone else, yes. you know, I enjoy going out to eat and, uh, you know, an occasional drink with a friend. What do people say when they do come to you? Do they tell you what they're looking for? Some people will make appointments to meet with me mm -hmm. in what we call Zen Life Coaching. So that they'll meet with me uh, monthly to talk about what they're looking for. In our programs, such as the one tonight, Zen Chat, there's a Q&A period, and they will reveal maybe you know why they came, what they're looking for. I asked Roshi if he could teach me how to meditate. To do that, we're going into the Zendo, where I'll be meeting three other monks, including one female monk. The monks have jobs and families outside the monastery, but several times a week, they come to teach and practice here. Classes are held in this Zendo, which is an incredibly peaceful place. Roshi, can you explain this altar to me? Does every altar have something similar? What you are seeing are symbols of consciousness. The altar has symbols that represent states of mind, and also it is a wooden altar. There are the elements of the earth. We have a bowl of water that is always central. Uh, the dirt in the incense bowl represents the earth. Uh, the wood, the natural wood, the pine cone, which happens to be from another monastery on the west coast. And the statue of the Buddha, again, is understood as a symbol of ultimate consciousness, the enlightenment, as some people refer to it. It's very calming in the Zendo, and I'm ready for Roshi to introduce me to meditation. My posture is important, he tells me, and I should also place my hands gently on my lap or on my knees. My eyes shouldn't be fully closed or fully open, and my breath should be calm. Throughout the period of meditation, you want to keep your attention on your breath. So we call that following our breath. So you want to be aware of when you're inhaling, and before you exhale, you pause and then exhale. And you want to be aware of the exhalation. What will inevitably happen is that you'll start thinking. So I tell people when you start thinking, you've stopped meditating. Mm -hmm. Or you may even doze off, you've stopped meditating. Mm -hmm. Or you may be involved in some conversation in your head, mm -hmm. you've stopped meditating. All you need to do is notice that and come back to your breath and start again. How long do you think I should sit for? We recommend usually you, you, you try to go for 10 minutes. But what's important is that you do it, quality is more important than quantity, mm -hmm. okay? The time will come naturally, mm -hmm. because once you do this with your full attention 
and experience the quality of it, you're going to naturally want more. What's essential is that you do it every day. As I tell people, if you're not prepared to commit to every day, don't bother. Mm -hmm. uh, meditation is not some magical instrument to kind of save us you know, when we're having a bad day. It's not designed for that. We are literally retraining our minds and bodies to remember what we call enlightenment is really more remembering our original nature, what we knew as a child, as an infant, and lost somewhere around four and six. If I had a room like this, it would be much easier because this room is just so calming. Well, if you ask any one of these monks, they will tell you that that is true. But what is also true, especially when we meditate for long hours, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> where you are. The, yeah, because the conflict and the struggle, especially as the body starts to ache and that becomes distracting, it would be just like meditating in the middle of Times Square. My time at the monastery has to end, even though I love the peaceful calm that's so easy to feel everywhere. It feels wonderful to be here. It's beautiful and it's peaceful. It's very nice. Thank you for letting me come in. This has been a gift. Thank you.